Hey Indie Game fans, before we get into the main list, as always, let's begin with some quick picks worth checking out. Don't Give Up A Cynical Tale is a comedic RPG about a game developer struggling with the condition we know as life. It is set mostly in a modern world, with some sequences exploring the character's mental state, but this involves things like ordering a pizza and the awkward social interactions that you have with other people, such as the neighbours that you have in the apartment block that you live in. The combat is some sort of mix between traditional turn-based and active real-time elements, and I'm happy to say that the writing in this is actually pretty good and funny, and not obnoxious at all. The Unforgiving World of Rebel Cops Rebel Cops is a spin-off game from the series This is the Police, which is completely geared toward turn-based tactical operations. A spin-off of the management sim This is the Police, Rebel Cops is an XCOM-style turn-based tactics game where the local town and government has been taken over by a mafia boss and, as the eponymous Rebel Cops, you have to fight through a bunch of criminals and your former colleagues to get at him. However, this game makes things interesting since as cops yourself, you do still try to keep your oath to protect and serve, so that means arresting criminals rather than killing them outright, which is interesting. Also, there are no hit points in this game where being shot will cause you to bleed out unless medical aid is applied. So some clever variations on genre staples. The Goof Troop Like Dandy and Randy is an action-adventure game that is probably best in co-op, where you play as two archaeologists banking on one big discovery to pay off their debts to the bank. I really love the look of this, from the vivid colours and the very retro pixel art, and it just conveys a sense of whimsy and excitement to it. Welcome to my game. The rules of this game are simple. There is no right or wrong, only consequences. Okay, okay, only consequences. Little Miss Fortune is an adventure game with both supernatural and fourth wall breaking elements, where our heroine, Little Miss Fortune, seeks the prize of eternal happiness as a gift to her mother. Wonderful look, and this comes to us from the developer of the similar but more spooky Friend Bowl, which has been excellently received as well. Mindustry, reductively, is factorial tower defense, but if you are not familiar, this means building supply chains using drills, conveyors, and drones to continually move resources from one place to another to feed the metaphorical machine so to speak. This game adds in more obvious conflict with an explicit tower defense slant as compared to the more open-ended structure of factorial, so some direction certainly helps. Moving on, here are the top 5 indie games you might have missed in September Mutazione self-describes as a mutant soap opera where small town gossip meets the supernatural. Play as a young girl who arrives at a mysterious town to take care of her ailing grandfather. This town was struck by a meteor a hundred years ago which caused many people to perish, but the survivors slowly begin to mutate and their legacy is what you see right now.
this is a very chill but well put together adventure game where secrets and betrayals threatens the peace but there is a wide variety of interesting characters and locations to explore. A story about guilt, love, grief, loss and acceptance, this certainly is a standout example of narrative games done right. Later Alligator is a wonderful adventure game with such a nice variety in gameplay and an excellent dose of humour to boot. Taking place in Alligator New York City, where, you guessed it, everyone is an alligator, you are hired by an alligator named Pat who believes that he is being targeted by the Alligator Mafia for assassination. Investigate this claim, meet other members of the family and find out the truth to this. Every character in this game, which reportedly is over a hundred, has such a uniqueness to them in terms of personality and visual look, and the mini games range from pinball, a claw machine, and even a dating sim, which is as bizarre, weird, and cool as it sounds. Welcome, Chosen One. I can see you're as green as grass, so naive. When I arrived here, there was no one to help me figure this place out. I had to discover everything through trial and error. Maybe the old man in the church is right, but without my help, you'll be nothing more than a quick snack for demons. Sin Slayers is a turn-based RPG with roguelite elements where you explore procedurally generated areas and have to hunt down the manifestations of the seven deadly sins yourself. First of all, the pixel art is great, and from the description, one can certainly draw parallels to Darkest Dungeon, which, as you guys know, is one of my all-time favourite games. All your RPG staples are present, with levelling up, equipment and crafting, and a variety in character classes, but their unique twist is something called sinfulness, which affects the difficulty of the enemies that you encounter and is changed based on your decisions like whether or not to desecrate graves for extra loot. Great product overall. I love Metroidvania games, so Demonica Everlasting Night was definitely of interest. It is perhaps needlessly sexualized with a questionable animation origin as you guys have pointed out, but it certainly has some interesting ideas. Playing as the lone survivor of a vicious demon attack on your village, you seek revenge by hunting them down. But what I find most interesting about this game is the controls, which are definitely inspired by fighting games, having you do quarter circle motions to throw a fireball equivalent, so to speak.
interesting combat system, but it does have a rough edge to it, feeling almost like a fan game of sorts. This might be a little bit of a cop-out, but kind words, lo-fi, chill beats to write to is not so much a game, but rather an anonymous writing app that lets you send your thoughts and worries out into the world in exchange for kind words. The developers have done a fantastic job in moderating the responses, so I've only gotten good ones so far, but of course, do be cautious when using this. I know, it's all sappy and soft, but it really is nice to know that you are not alone in your struggles and that can help your mental well-being tremendously. So this takes the number one spot of the month. For more indie games you might have missed, check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.